<laughs> so up next, by request, uh, we have the amazing Adriana and the fabulous Reese. Uh, give him a hand. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us here today. We are so happy to see such a wonderful crowd and we are thrilled to be here talking to you about observing thy pipelines. Now before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about us. My name is Adriana Villela and I love solving difficult problems, whether it's as part of my day job, which is, is a senior developer advocate at ServiceNow Cloud Observability, formerly LightStep, try to say that three times fast, um, or on a rock wall, which is where you'll find me blowing off steam when I'm not at work. I checked out a local gym today, super fun. Um, among other things, I am a CNCF ambassador and a second year HashiCorp ambassador. I work with Reese in the hotel end user working group. I'm a tech blogger, podcaster, and I have been doing computer things for 30 plus years, starting at age 10 when I learned basic, thanks to my dad. So. I guess that makes me pretty old. <laughs> and, oh, jeez, I'm Reese. <laughs> uh, my name is Reese. I'm a senior developer relations engineer at New Relic. I'm involved in the OTEL community as part of the end user working group, along with Adriana, as well as some other wonderful folk. Um, we work directly with end users, um, mostly through like monthly discussions, practical sessions, and interviews. Oh. And we're always interested in talking to end users about um, interesting use cases and problems that you face using open telemetry. So we would love to hear from you if you have anything to share. I um, also enjoy doing tech support things. So figuring out interesting problems and learning about interesting use cases. Yeah, and we're excited to be here. All right, well, now that we've got the pleasantries out of the way, let's get to the meaty bits. So. We all know that the software of today is orders of magnitude more complicated than the software of 20 years plus. And of course, that means that we have a new set of challenges that come with it. Now, fortunately, because of the wonders and magic of observability, we are able to get better insights into how our applications are performing and how to solve those gnarly bugs that we get into prod, right? Which is awesome. Now, similarly, we also see that the way that we deliver software has evolved. And again, thanks to the magic of DevOps, we are able to embrace the practices of automation and codification of all the things so that we can ultimately shorten the amount of time it takes to get our code into production. So we've gone from quarterly, which I totally remember starting my career 20 years ago um, with quarterly releases. Um, we've gone from quarterly to monthly to every two weeks to weekly to daily and sometimes multiple times a day, which is amazing. But when it comes to the observability of our CI CD pipelines, it seems like we haven't made as much progress with that compared to with our application code, which is a problem because our CI CD pipelines are the way in which we deliver our code into production. So when our pipelines are working smoothly, awesome. We're happy, code's making it into prod. But when we encounter a problem, it means that all of a sudden, the way in which we get our code into prod, there's a bottleneck, we can't deploy it, and things go caca, and we don't want that. So. As you may have guessed, today's topic is going to be on the observability of CI CD pipelines. More specifically, we are going to level set with some definitions to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, we are going to also talk about why being able to observe a pipelines makes a difference, um, how to make them observable, and finally, the challenges in creating observable pipelines. So we're going to start with some definitions. Um, and there are three definitions that I'm going to cover today. So they're gonna be observability, open telemetry, CI, CD. I know many of you are familiar with these terms, have probably heard, it, heard them many times throughout your careers, sick of them to death. But at the same time, I wanna make sure that we're on a level playing field, speaking the same terminology, so we shall get started. So observability, or O11Y, OLLI for short, is, uh, allows us to understand a system from the outside by, while allowing us to ask questions without knowing the inner workings of that system. And 
this is one of our favorite definitions of observability. Might not be yours, but this is the one that we're using for the purposes of this talk. Now, what does this mean? It means that observability allows us to, uh, allows our systems to emit enough information so that we can follow the breadcrumbs to answer the question, why is this happening? And in order for us to have that information that we can uh, interpret to understand why is this happening, well, we need our good friend open telemetry. And open telemetry, or OTEL for short, is our vendor neutral CNCF open source framework that generates, ingests, transforms, exports telemetry data. And the thing that I love about open telemetry is the fact that most of the observability vendors out there have fully embraced open telemetry as a standard. But most importantly, there are companies out there that are using open telemetry like eBay and Skyscanner. And I think that proves to the actual success of open telemetry is having folks using it. Now, we can't talk about open telemetry without talking about its good friend, the OTEL collector, which is our vendor neutral binary that is used to ingest, transform, and export data um, so that we can, it, it's basically a, a data pipeline of sorts. So it has many functions, um, but there are multiple, uh, there are three main components of the OTEL collector that are important to this talk, which is first, we have the receivers, which ingest data. Then we have the processors, which are used to transform our data. So things like data obfuscation, uh, add and remove attributes, filter data, um, sample data, batch data, et cetera. And then finally, you need to send them somewhere for analytics. And that is what our exporters do. So now we've understood open telemetry observability. Final definition is CI-CD. Now, CI-CD is an automated approach to software delivery that is made up of two components. First, we have continuous integration, or CI, which is all about making sure that we um, are able to code, package, sorry, code build, test, and package our application code as soon as a code change is made. And then finally, CD, continuous delivery, means getting our code into production in a timely manner. And this is important to us because it allows us to get our features out into the world faster, our bug fixes, and other general updates. And it also provides us with a standardized approach for providing continuous feedback for our developers. So I'll hand this over to Reese now to continue the conversation. You guys want to see that cat walk along? But I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so now that we're all on the same page with those key concepts, let's talk about why the observability of CSCD pipelines matter. So when you have a healthy pipeline, your team is able to write, build, test, and deploy code, as well as config changes into production on a continuous basis. You'll also be able to improve or achieve development agility, which means you can change your operations and minimize the amount of time it takes to figure out whether those changes had a positive or ne negative impact on the health of your application. On the other hand, when your pipeline is unhealthy, you may run into more or one or more of the following issues. So you may face slow deployments, um, bug fixes may not get out fast enough to curb user dissatisfaction, and small problems could snowball into critical issues. Um, you may have issues with testing, so not being, uh, having to wait for a test to complete or not being, having enough time to test against different configuration variables could lead to slow uh, delayed deployments as well as challenges with ensuring that you have good enough application performance across your user base. And you might also have difficulty in determining underlying issues that may be causing technical debt. And pipelines, so while pipelines may not be a production environment that external, user, external users interact with, they most certainly are a production environment that internal users, so SRE software engineers, interact with. Having the ability to observe your pipelines means being able to, oh, I already clicked, well, prevent um, unnecessary long cycle times, um, which impacts the amount of time it takes to get a commit into production, reducing delay in pushing out new features and bug fixes, as well as reducing wait time for users. 
CNS CD pipelines are also run by code that define how they work. So, and we all know that despite our best and most careful efforts, code can still fail. Making our applications observable helps us make sense of things when something goes wrong. So similarly, when we add observability into our pipelines, it helps us get a better understanding of what's going on when something fails. It also helps make troubleshooting easier um, by helping us answer questions such as, what failed? Why? Has it happened before? What has failed most frequently? What is the normal runtime of our pipeline? Do we have any bottlenecks? And if so, where are they? And can we shorten the lead time for fixing pipeline issues? So in order to answer those questions, we're gonna to need to collect certain information about our pipelines. Some of that would be things like branch name, commit SHA, machine IP, run type, so things like scheduled or triggered by merge pull, pull Jesus, failed step, step duration, build number, and now I'm gonna hand it back to Adriana to talk about how we're going to add observability. Thank you, points. awesome. So, you know, we have a pretty good understanding of the type of data that we need, why we need this data, right? How it provides us the observability of pipelines. But while we were doing research for this, we kept running into the same question. Okay, but how? Give me an example, I just want a friggin' example. So let's go back to our original definition of observability, where our system emits enough information so we can follow the breadcrumbs to answer the question, why is this happening? And again, how do we get the data? How do our systems emit the data? Through open telemetry. So we know that with our application code, we use open telemetry to enable observability. So it stands to reason that, hey, why don't we use open telemetry to enable the observability of our CI CD pipelines? Awesome, but again, but how? And so um, you might be wondering, okay, how is it that we enable these things? Oh, that's nice. Slides are a little bit out of order, damn it. Um, that's fine. Um, so how is it that it is possible to, for us to um, enable the observability of our CI CD pipelines? There are a few options out there. So first off, we have SAS vendors that provide observability of CI CD pipeline functionality as part of their products. Um, some of these examples, uh, some of these vendors include Datadog and Splunk. Now they're not necessarily uh, using open telemetry to enable it, but it's worth noting that there are vendors that are out there doing that. Then you have vendors that have gone on and created um, some, uh, some tooling to, so that you can pop it into whatever your favorite CI CD tool is uh, to enable the observability of pipeline. And so I wanna call out um, Honeycomb Build Events, which does that, um, which then allows you to just pop that, uh, pop that tool in and then you get some tracing information from your CI CD pip pipelines. Um, we also have some SaaS offerings. So Jenkins and Tekton have um, open telemetry capabilities. Um, and then, what a, well, you might be wondering, okay, what about GitHub Actions? Well, there isn't a native GitHub Action for observability of CI CD pipelines. However, there have been some lovely folks in the community who have gone ahead and created their own GitHub Actions to enable the observability of GitHub uh, Actions pipelines. And then finally, our little spoiler bullet point there. Um, there are also tools that are used within our pipelines that can provide us with the observability of um, and further observability of what's going on in our CI CD pipelines. So you might be wondering, okay, what's an example of that? So we have tools like um, Maven. There's a, a Maven uh, build hotel um, extension. Um, there is also uh, Ansible. There's an Ansible plugin. It's called the hotel uh, callback. There, if you use PyTest for your Python, uh, for testing your Python code, there is, um, a library called PyTest Otel, and then finally another one that's super cool, something called Otel CLI, where if you do any bash scripting in your pipelines, you can add some uh, open telemetry data to your pipelines through this lovely uh, little tool. So that's awesome, but what does it all mean? What exactly is an observable CI CD pipeline look like? Because so take this example, right? So suppose we have a Jenkins pipeline, we are building some Java code without observability of our CI CD pipeline. Maybe it's working, maybe it's not. Maybe it looks like it's working, but eh, 
We don't really know, right? So suppose we enabled some observability uh, into this pipeline. So for example, well, we're using Jenkins, so let's use this lovely Jenkins plugin so that we can get some further insights into what's going on in our pipeline. Awesome. Then in our build step, we are using Maven, so you know what? Let's use that Maven Hotel plugin, and maybe there are some additional scripting that's happening in Bash, so we use that Hotel CLI to get further insights. Well, during the testing phase, there is this lovely, uh, so if you're using Java, obviously you're most likely gonna use JUnit. So then there's this lovely little Maven plugin um, called the uh, JUnit Jupyter plugin. Um, it's an open source tool, it was developed by Dynatrace. Um, so that's a nice little option to get further insights into your pipeline. Um, when you are packaging up your code and use Artifactory, well, Artifactory uh, generates logs and there is this lovely little um, receiver in uh, the Hotel collector called the file logs receiver, which allows you to uh, tail um, uh, your logs um, from the collector so we can gain some further insights when you're building your packages. And then finally, when you're deploying, suppose you are using Ansible to orchestrate your deployments, you can use this Ansible plugin uh, so that you have further insights into your deployment steps. And if you happen to be doing some additional um, bash scripting as part of your deployment, you can again turn to the Hotel CLI. And then of course, all of this goes into a collector which ingests the data in the native OTLP format um, or it uses the file log receiver. And then there's also um, this Git uh, receiver as well, which if you're using any of the main Git providers, um, you can get some further insights into what's going on in your, in your Git provider tools so that now you have this bigger picture of what's going on with your uh, CI CD pipelines. And of course, all this information should go somewhere. So we want to send it off to an observability backend. That's awesome. What does this look like in real life? We have shamelessly taken this lovely screenshot from the Hotel Collector Contrib repo, which shows what your traces might look like if you were using a Jenkins pipeline alongside um, and, and then also using the uh, Maven Hotel build plugin. So that gives you an idea of what the data looks like. Um, and that was specifically in Jaeger, which is oh, yeah, supposed sorry. to be recognized. Yes, anyways. Jaeger. <laughs> um, so that is all well and good, um, but you may have noticed something that we did when we were putting this together, which is that while we agree that adding observability to our CI CD pipelines is important, and OpenTelemetry provides several extensions, the space as a whole isn't super well developed. And also, what if you're not using Python or or Java. Um, so it's complicated. Uh, while we recognize the importance of implementing observability into our CDTI pipelines, there's still a lot of work to be done around standardization. I think um, there was an OTEP opened, open telemetry enhanced proposal open earlier this year around semantic conventions for CSCD pipelines. Um, it's still open, obviously. I'm not quite sure. There was a comment on it we just saw uh, from last week, so it sounds like things might be picking back up, but it was kind of quiet for a while. Um, so, OpenTelemetry isn't built into most of our CSE tooling, but there are some movements, and they're slow going, but there's some initiatives that are open, and there are also homegrown um, options that Adriana touched on earlier. And if you're interested in contributing more to OpenTelemetry, and this is something of interest, please definitely go see the OpenTelemetry folk at the hotel booth in the pavilion. I think we have a link to the, yes. Yeah, we do. To there, to the map. So what do we learn today? LV pipeline means we're able to deploy code and config changes into production on a continuous basis whereas an unhealthy pipeline could lead to slow deployments, testing issues, um, as well as technical debt. I forgot the last one. And adding observability to our pipelines can help us resolve some of these issues. We can use OpenTelemetry to add observability today, but options are limited at this time. However, things appear to be moving in their direction. And again, if you are interested in contributing, definitely please come to the OpenTelemetry booth and stay tuned. 
Um, to wrap up, we would like to thank my kitten, Taco, for being such an amazing model. Hopefully you all enjoyed watching her. <laughs> and we have a few things. Oh, these are some handy resources we referenced for our talk. And I believe the slide deck will be available online, but I'll leave it up since for some pictures. Okay, hold on. Okay, one more second. Oh, okay. And while you're here, I, was like, yeah. yours. <laughs> I don't work for While lights, you're so here, sorry. check out the hotel booth in the Project Pavilion, sorry, I can't read. <laughs> can't read sideways, can't read my slides. Um, also check out the ServiceNow booth to learn about ServiceNow Cloud Observability. We are in booth N26. And the hotel booth? Um, in the Project Pavilion. Project Pavilion, yes. Okay, yeah. and yeah. yes, there's also a party tonight. Um, New Relic is hosting with Honeycomb and Observe IQ, so please come by. The event brought my seat. It's sold out, but it's not. Just come. <laughs> Bring your badge. If you're coming, yay. If you were planning on coming, it's sold out. It Sorry. says it's sold out, but um, it's it's not. Please. Tell me what you are. Huh? Tell me what you are. <laughs> Oh yeah, just, just say you're with us. But you have to, I think you have to bring your badge, so make sure you have your badge. And I think, oh, yes, and then your podcast. Oh yeah, um, yeah, I have a podcast called Geeking Out. I, I produce it with my 15-year-old daughter. She does all the video editing and she designed the logo. And Reese was on one of the very first episodes, so extra reason to check it out. Yes. <laughs> and finally, check us out on our socials. We would love to continue the conversation with you and to connect with y'all. Um, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Oh.